Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Well, uh, I picked up uh, the relic of Blessed Solanus Casey. Um, we are able to have the relic for a week until uh, Sunday, February 11. The relic will be here in the church throughout the week, uh, although some of the time it'll be over in the school. But for the most part, it will be here in the church, and so please stop by. Um, along with the relic, which I'll show you in a minute, there are these six banners. Now, I am uh, not uh, a big fan of banners, but uh, as I understand it, these banners have um, some biographical uh, information about Blessed Solanus Casey, um, some information about what relics are. And uh, if you remember, I did a, a video on relics, uh, which you can take a look at up here. I don't know, there's six of these banners. I don't know if they'll all fit here in the vestibule, but uh, I'll set them up and uh, we'll see if we can find a, a place for all of them. So now that we have the, the banners set up, uh, we can take a look at the relic itself in this reliquary, which you can see here. Now this is a, uh, a first-class relic of Blessed Solanus Casey. Uh, a first-class relic is, uh, is something that was a part of the saint, um, usually like a fragment of a bone uh, or something like that. Um, a second-class relic would be something that a saint owned. Um, and then a third class relic would be something that a saint touched. Um, so you have first class, second class, third class relics. This is a first class relic, which you can see in this reliquary here. Again, this relic will be on display here in the church uh, until Sunday, February the 11th. So now that we've seen the relic, uh, we can talk a little bit about who Blessed Solanus Casey is and a little bit about his life. Bernard Francis Casey was born in Wisconsin in 1870 to a devout Irish family. Uh, after spending his younger years working uh, various jobs, he entered the seminary in Milwaukee at the age of 21. Uh, he struggled in his studies, and in 1896, he was prompted through prayer to join the Capuchins in Detroit, taking the name Salanus. He was ordained in 1904, but because of his struggles, he was not allowed to preach nor hear confessions. Now, many would have complained about this or been bitter and angry, but Solanus was a man of great humility, and he saw all of this as a way to grow in holiness. He, of course, had the great gift of healing, and many came to him with various illnesses. But when people were healed through his prayers and blessings, he never attributed that to himself. It was always the work of God. He often worked as a porter or sacristan, and even though he was not allowed to preach, when he spoke with people, his words gave inspiration to many people. On August 1, 1924, he was transferred to Detroit, where he worked again as a porter and sacristan at St. Bonaventure Monastery. For 20 years, he greeted people who would come to the monastery, and it was in these meetings that people came to know His Holiness. He counseled people, he blessed them, and many were healed of their illnesses as a result of his prayers and blessings. But again, in all things, he simply gave thanks to God. And so, in addition to his humility, was also his spirit of gratitude, the strength to always give thanks to God, even ahead of time, as he's known for saying. Gratitude is the first sign of a thinking, rational creature, wrote Father Solanus. Ingratitude leads to so many breaks with God and our neighbor. Thank God ahead of time is what he counseled many people to do, Doing so shows confidence and trust in God. 
And finally was his compassion, especially for the sick and the poor. Father Solanus would spend hours upon hours meeting with people. Lengthy lines, as many as 200 people a day, came to see Father Solanus, bringing to him their problems and their sufferings, and he would spend time with each one of them, listening to them and giving them his blessing. So, in addition to his compassion, how can we not also think of his patience? And there are many other virtues that fill the heart of Father Solanus, but we could see in them what made him such a holy priest. Father Solanus Casey died in Detroit on July 31, 1957. He was declared venerable in 1995 and was beatified in 2017 at a mass in Ford Field that many of us here at St. Edward attended. We pray that one day he will be elevated to the rank of saint. For us, with Lent coming up, it would be a good thing for us to do to take note of the virtues of Blessed Solanus Casey, his humility, his gratitude, compassion, patience, and prayerfully discern whether we are lacking in any of them. And through our prayer and fasting, we can ask God to strengthen those virtues within us. In prayer, we humble ourselves before God. Here we have an opportunity to also give thanks to God for the many blessings he has given us, and even for whatever blessings may come. In our fasting and penances, we learn about suffering, and in experiencing suffering, we can grow in our compassion for others who truly suffer. Fasting also teaches us patience as we deny ourselves for the sake of some future greater good. Through the intercession of Blessed Solanus Casey, may God help you to have a holy Lent that you may grow in virtue and follow in the example of the holiness of Blessed Solanus Casey. God bless you.